Hello and welcome to the ECDL Module 3 Word Processing Demo Lecture. This video will be covering the introduction to the module, we'll be getting started by using the application, and we'll be also covering areas of formatting text within Microsoft Word. My name is Andy McCall and this is the first of the several videos we'll be going through for your Module 3 Word Processing syllabus in preparation for your test which we'll be taking. As mentioned, this is the first video, so we have the introduction, getting started and formatting text. Then you'll have available formatting continued and alignment. You'll also have inserting objects with header and footer. Continued will be smart objects, tables and reviewing a document. Then coming to the conclusion, we'll have the view options, page layout and printing. And finally, we'll be covering mail merge and also just briefly chatting about preparing for your test as well. So what I'm going to be using through all these videos is a word processing demonstration um, file which is available to you um, to use yourselves. Um, it can be downloaded through Aula and it can also be downloaded through the W drive as well. At the final video, Mail Merge, there's also a Mail Merge folder which is available on Aula and the W drive which I also suggest you download um, pretty much at the start of this video or you can download it at the end by all means but the demonstration file is going to be used in every single one of these videos for the whole of our um, process of going through every single step in the syllabus of word processor. If I just show you in the W drive for example if you were to go yourself onto your W drive and you were to type in your module code whichever one it is and then if you were to get into for example you'll see a M3 word folder and then what you'll have is you'll have the manual and work files first of all this is the manual that is part of the syllabus so you can have a look at this what my videos are doing is I'm breaking everything that's in the the manual and pulling it into chunk slices which is relevant for your needs when you're preparing for your test but also if you were to go back and click the lecture materials we have the M3 Word demonstration and we also have the Mail Merge folder. So the M3 Word demonstration file is what I'm going to be using to show you all the key areas that we're going to be needing to know about. And the final video, Mail Merge, if we were to double click in, we have a Mail Merge job interview letter and interviews file. But I'm not going to go into detail with that because that will come at the end so I don't want to confuse you too much. What you can do is you can drag them both and place them over onto your desktop and then they'll be available to you to grab or you can also put them onto your local um, student um, drive that you have just down available to you just there as well. So let's get started and let us go to our M3 Word demonstration file to begin. Once you open up the file you'll see that we've got M3 Word demonstration which is the name of any file you have open on your computer. You'll see you'll have a set of tabs available to you just which I'm um, going over hovering over just now as we see. The first thing we're going to look at is how we create a new document and also save a document as well. So it's very important even though that these sound like simple steps but it is very important to be aware that we are doing it correctly in perspective of taking our test. So what we do first of all we're going to create a new file and if we click file you'll see on the left hand side we'll have a menu which has info, new, open, save, save as, print etc just down the bottom. So what we're going to do straightforward is create a new document, click new, blank document and straight away we have a blank sheet of paper and we have our cursor flickering ready for us to start typing some text just here. What we also want to do now is we want to want to save the document as well. So at the same time, because it's a brand new document, we're going to click File and we're going to click Save As. And we click Save As because we want to A, name the document and B, we also want to ensure we're placing the document in the correct position on your storage device on your computer. It be a hard drive in the computer, it be a USB device that's been plugged in. What's very important in remembering for your test though is that we will be asked to specifically place it in a specific location that they're asking for us. It's very important that we don't just go in, file save as, as we, I'm sure we always normally do, but we are knowing where to correctly put it. So we can click file save as and what we'll have is we'll have this sheet will give us some favorite um, folders that are a regular occurrence that we may save into. What we want to do is click browse though. Very important we click browse and we'll have the save as window just available to us here and you'll see we can name the file we're going to call it our first document 
but we also must be aware of where we're saving it. Now in our test it's going to ask us to save it to the Z drive. The Z drive is a spoof fake um, network drive, uh, folder that is only available to you when you're taking your online diagnostic and your online test. When you start practicing on your, pre -on uh, your diagnostic you'll see that it's available to you. There'll be a set of questions I'm sure that'll ask you to save it to the Z drive. To locate the Z drive you'll see We've got W, you shouldn't have some of these, but you'll definitely have the student shared. But underneath you'll have a Z drive that's there. So you would double click the Z drive and then you would save it um, with the correct name that the test is asking for. Be very aware as well that you must ensure that your name of your file is exactly matching what it's asking for you in the test. A lot of people I've seen in my experience are very confident what they're doing, but they may miss out a word. So they may put, for instance, instead of first, they might put first just being aware of what they're doing and then going to click save as well so I'm going to just for example put it onto my desktop but you'll be putting it onto your save and we'll be clicking save and you'll see our first document has been created for us there as well. Just another point um, being aware is we can also save it in different file types as well so if we click file save as same steps that I've gone through but instead if we go to save as type we can also save it as a PDF as well so if you any people here are using Adobe Acrobat Reader and just want it to be in the PDF format you can click PDF and it will save it as a PDF format. You also have your Microsoft 97 and 2003 um, document compatibility so if any individuals are still using the previous versions of Word before 2007 and you also have your Word template as well there as well so you've got those options to you but the default one is always your word document which is word dot uh, sorry it's dot doc x so what is the ribbon the ribbon is this large area just here which is connected to each of these tabs so you'll see just here we've got home tab that has been highlighted and the home tabs purpose is to change text format text put borders um, add some styles we can also find replace and select if you click the other tabs like insert it allows us to insert objects and there's other areas we're going to be covering as well within this syllabus however just to be aware is that design references and developer if you have it available are not covered in the syllabus so just be aware that design references and developer you do not need to be aware of just this but the other ones we will be covering as well so the ribbon is really important it's been available since after the 2007 version and it's been really helpful because it allows you to quickly go to an area that is a specific purpose so home formatting and you can go there as well just going back to a document that is open, a lot of people do get caught out in their test about if they were asked to close a document. People think that when you're closing a document, you're clicking the X just up here. That's not correct. What that does is it closes the application. The correct location to close a document is in the file tab just here, which doesn't have a ribbon as we are aware of. It goes to a completely different screen. And then you can click the close button just here and that will close the document and then you're able to open other documents but the application will still be open for you as well. We also have another uh, option which is really good. It's actually one of the new features uh, within Microsoft Office 2016. It was previously a question mark that allowed you to go and find some advice. So you'll see just here we've got the tell me what you want. So if I wanted to, for instance, find out how to make text bold, for example, I can click bold and it will give us straight away an option. I strongly do recommend that you do not use this in your test. Two reasons. One, hopefully that you'll understand all of the locations of specific um, tools within the application, but also it doesn't work correctly in your test. It will give you false um, areas of where to go to because word processing has different features particularly if you look at it in a more detailed perspective so I'd strongly recommend you do not use this because also the test will look at, look at it as, in, as actually being answered incorrectly so if you are asked to for example make some text bold you just do the steps that you need to do and select the tool that's correctly so if you are asked to locate where the tell me what you want is you can place your cursor if it is a question that's asking in that sort of um, format it is available to you here use it by all means if you're using it at a normal occurrence it is a handy tool if you do actually forget where something is but I strongly recommend that you do not use it when you're using your test as you should hopefully know how where everything is 
When you're working on a document, you may find sometimes it's personal preference that the ribbon is getting in your way. If the ribbon is getting in your way, you'll see just here, you've got this arrow just there, collapse the ribbon. If I were to click it, it will collapse the ribbon for us. And a good way of getting the ribbon back is really quite easy. If we were to double click any of these tabs just here, we can get it just there as well. Just click there. And you can also show tabs and commands through the option there too. While I'm just discussing this, you may have noticed when they selected over and the icon to collapse the ribbon, which is minimize um, if other ways of explaining it. But you'll notice if I hover my mouse over, in about one second, it gives you a description of what the icon on the ribbon does. It's actually very handy because there are a lot of options just here as well. So if you are in your test and you're going through, um, I want to know how to do something and you, you out the blue may have had a, a freeze um, of remembering. It does normally happen. It happens even myself. You can hover your mouse over. Don't left click it. And it will tell you what it does, what its purpose is. So we've got bold, italic, underline, or if we were to go over to here, shading as well. Really handy tools to go through. Another really important um, part of Microsoft Word and also with the other um, Office applications is to set your username and also the default file location. So if we just click back into File and we would go down to Options just here, you can go to General and in the middle you can change the username to whatever you're requiring it. So we could call it Joe Blogs and if you were to go into the Save option just here you'll see your default file location, you can change that. For yourselves, when you're using the, the uh, Word um, application and you're just pressing the file save as, it will automatically go to the documents folder, which I've got explained just here. So you may be asked in your test to change the default location or also change the username, what it is. Remember in your test, even though you are knowing with the location of where to do this specific purpose, you must ensure that you get your spelling and if it is the default file location, ensure that the address is correct in its spelling as well. Really important to be aware of that too. And once you've completed what you needed to do, I'll put it back to what it was. There, we click OK. Very important to click OK. And then we've completed that as well. So it's always in File, Options, General for Username, and Save for the default file location as well. So we're going to start with the home ribbon, just what I'm going over with my mouse cursor just here. And the first thing we're going to look at is formatting text. One good part about Microsoft Word um, and all the other applications, Excel, if you use them or PowerPoint, is that each ribbon, even though they have a purpose, they've got these sections that are aligned just here as well. So the first one we're going to look at is the font one, which if people have previously used um, any word processing um, application, you know that the main feature is inserting text and formatting it for its different styles and looks as well. So you'll see we've got the bold option, we've got italic, and we've got underline just here as well. We could also, if I use these here, ensure that we highlight any text before we apply it. So you'll see here font, if I was to place my cursor on the font here, you'll see that the bold has been highlighted, which means it's done. If I was to unclick that, you'll notice bold's not been applied. Bold, italic, underline. Always ensure that if you are asked in your test to apply specific formatting to text, the first step you should do is ensure that you have it selected correct. Alongside the bold, italic and underline, we have what is available which is called subscript and superscript just here. So if you just notice where we've got one X and an X just over here, if we were to highlight the number two, you'll see that superscript is applied to that text there, which allows the text to hang above of a text that it's on the same sentence with. If we to take it off, it makes it as normal text. If we were to apply subscript, or if we were to apply superscript, you can't have them both on. So when you click either, they will click away. So it's really good options just there as well. You can also change the size, select the text. You'll see you've got your size option just here. You can make it, or if you want a bit more controlled, you can go up using the options to the right hand side by increasing or decreasing. We can change our color. We've got our text font color just here. 
as you'll notice I highlighted over the icon and I can change the color to a color that I'm after as well and then also we have text effects we're selecting the text and you'll see just here text effects we can apply outline we can also apply shadow reflections um, we also have some of our templates just here we, we can also use as well so a lot of good key features within the um, font group just around here the next part we're going to look at is text case so it's a really handy feature within Microsoft Word which allows us to alter the case of any text within a sentence um, instead of using um, normal features using our keyboard by for example holding the shift button down and changing it to a W as, as such what we can do is we can apply uh, change case by selecting a specific bit of text just here and if we go into back into our font group and we highlight over you'll see just next to the increase and decrease icons for text size you can click change case and what we can do here is we've got sentence case lowercase uppercase capitalize each word and we can also toggle the case as well so click sentence case keep an eye on the capital S just here and you'll see it creates a sentence case just there if we select the one underneath uppercase and we click just there and we click uppercase you'll see it does go over the image but you'll notice that all the text is in capital just there as well so you see and then finally you can capitalize each word which puts a capital letter at the start of every word select my name change case capitalize each word and there you'll see it applies there. Another feature within Microsoft Word is text borders. This allows us to put a square box around a specific text in your document. The position of the option is not in the font group this time, it's actually in the paragraph section just here. So if we go to here and you'll see we've got borders and we've got a drop down arrow and it gives us the ability to put a borders of a right border, a left border, top or bottom, or others there. What we're going to do is we're going to really take control of the borders um, in the text. First thing we need to be aware of though is what we're going to be using. So if I just quickly create a brand new blank document just to show you on the canvas, I'm just going to type in a piece of text saying new document for demonstration. I'm going to select text and I'm going to go to my borders and I'm going to click borders and shading. The borders and shading option will open up. Be very aware though, and it has been seen a few times by individuals, to ensure that if it is a border for text, we're just having the border, we're just ignoring these ones here. So what we can do is we can apply a box around it and you'll see the preview will show you what it will look like. Then what we can do is we can apply colour and change the colour just there. Good little feature um, in Microsoft Word. It's the same as what we discussed in the previous video. Is that if you select an icon, but, uh, sorry, before you select an icon and you hover over the um, icon, it will tell you what its purpose is. The colors palette in Microsoft Word also works the same way. So you may be in your test asked for a specific color to be applied to text or a border. What you can do is place your mouse cursor, my pointer, sorry, over one of the um, colors, and it will tell you what it is blue accent one lighter 60 so we're going to click there and then we can change the width as well keep in mind in your test what size of width that the um, question is asking your text border to be I'm just going to make it a bit more dark it's a bit more clearer to see make it a bit free point you also have available styles as well and if it did ask you in the test to put a style on there you can and you'll see it changes as well click OK finally and there we have it We've got your border just there. If we select again, go back into balls and shading, and we're going to reapply, make it a free point. We can make it thicker as well. So it's a really good tool, and that is the position of where you go to do that there as well. Cut and paste, copy and paste, really good handy t features um, using uh, uh, Microsoft Word. What it allows us to do is to take text really quickly and place it into memory and put it into another position. So the cut and paste, if we were to select this text just here, so we're always making sure we select, and you'll see we've got your cut, copy, paste. We can cut, and it will take it 
out of the document, it'll place it into memory, and then we can place our cursor just here, and then press paste, and there we are, as we've got the images just down there, it will put it underneath where we want to. Be very aware though, in your test, you may be asked to do what is called move and copy. Remember, move is cut. So just keep in mind that move, if you see it in your test question, you'll be selecting the cut button. As such, select, we're going to move by cutting, and then we're going to paste as required. Copy works in the same way. We're going to select, we're going to copy, we're going to place the cursor, um, and we're going to paste. So it keeps the original text, but it also does a copy, and we're positioning it where we need to. As stated previously with um, cut, which is move, keep in mind that your question may say duplicate text and place it into another position. When it means duplicate, it means copy as well. You also, by all means, even though you have the ribbon, you can also use your shortcut. So we can right click and we can also use our cut copy as well. But keep in mind to use the paste as well. Or if you want to use your um, your keyboard shortcuts, which you've got control X for cut, control C for a copy and control V for pasting as well. Next, we've got paragraph spacing, really handy um, tool which allows us to change the distance between paragraphs on your uh, document. So you'll see we've got here, we've got a set of paragraphs as an example just there. We're going to use those for what we're going to demonstrate. In the paragraph section just here, you'll see there's a lot of options. Some of these we're going to be talking about in a second, but you'll notice that there is a paragraph settings. This is a paragraph launcher, as we call it. What it does is it expands the section. You'll see them in other groups as well. For fonts got it, clipboards got it, paragraph, and you'll notice the styles. Editing, for example, doesn't. So what we can do is I'm going to select this paragraph just here. I'm going to select there. And this will allow us to do some spacing and indentation as well. There is a, a position um, in the rib a tab ribbon layout that allows you to do some of these, but keep in mind that you want extra features because you may be asked to do a specific um, task in your test. And the best place to go to get the options, in fact, it's the only place, is to go to paragraph and use your launcher just here as well, which is really, really, really good. So I have my text selected, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the spacing after this paragraph. So you'll see here the spacing zero point is the space between these this paragraph just underneath here. So if I was to click to go quite large, 24, you'll see, you'll notice there's a large space there. Click just here, let's do before. And you'll see it spaces it out as well. So you've got that there. You also have your indentation too. So if we just go back in, select this paragraph. Put this back to normal. And you'll see you've got your indentation just here, which will push in. It gives you a preview of what it will do just there. So if I really make this one quite large, the right hand side, you'll see it's a large space. You can also use see from the rulers point just there as well, which is really good. Control Z, good feature if you want to undo anything that you've previously done as well. So you've got your undo and your redo, you can use those as well, so really handy. Those are also very handy in terms of when you're doing your test, um, because if you're in your test, you will may make a mistake and you may want to take away what you've just previously done. There is no harm in you pressing your undo, typing, or if you want to redo what you've just done there as well, it's really good. Creating a line of merging paragraphs. Um, it's an area that does cause quite a bit of confusion and with a lot of individuals because of the wording merging. A lot of people think with merging, it's regarding mail merge, which we're going to be discussing afterwards. But it's actually just combining two paragraphs together. What we do is we've got a paragraph here, which ends in suite, and we've got another paragraph, which is we would like to make reservations just there. What you want to do is you want to place your cursor just before it and press your backspace key and it will merge the paragraph for you. Let's move this out of the way. Let's control Z and do it. Or if it's the cursor is on the paragraph before, you can press your delete key and once again, get that out of the way, it will merge them both together.
you can just put a space just to ensure that there is consistency there so you've got that really really good key option and it's a real straightforward because you will highly likely be asked that in your test um, to merge two paragraphs together so just remember where your cursor is positioned depends that if it's before you would press your delete key and if it's after you would press your backspace just dependent of where you've got them there as well okay good point is bullets and shading so bullets and shading we've um, have text just here we can select our text and we can apply bullets which is in the paragraph section if you hover over them you will see it highlights and then we can create which ones that are specifically asking for a good tool in Microsoft Word is knowing what is being put on to your document in terms of the formatting and how it's been arranged a really handy tool is this option just here in paragraph which is called show and hide if we were to click show and hide you'll see we have these marks here these are called paragraph marks for example when we're typing in Microsoft Word so for instance there today my name is Andy. you'll see it's a paragraph mark if I press enter it doesn't create a new sentence it creates a new paragraph for us so just be remember that these are paragraph marks there and if you were to have that highlighted if you were printing it wouldn't print the heart of the paragraph marks for you they never get printed so if you have them on and off if you had them on before you print and you're worried that it's going to print them don't be um, too concerned it won't so it should be okay just there Next part we're going to do is a really, really, really good feature, which is the paragraph um, tab marks. So what it does is it allows us to space tabs in a document. For example, you see we've got all this text just here. We've got Abby Garson, 12 Greenway Court, Shepparton. If I show you that there's a space just here between them, if I was to press the show and hide, you'll notice that there's a, a arrow just that point there what that means is that we've clicked when we've moved um, the text is the tab key on your keyboard just the left hand side if I was to press space on my keyboard you'll see we get dots that's when we're moving an extra space in the document if I was to press the tab button it moves a distance just there what we can do is we can change the size and distance of these tabs just here and how to do that is first of all we have to ensure we have to select our text that's in question I'm just going to show you the example first of all of that one just there that first sentence we're going to click paragraph settings and this time we're going to go to tabs just there so now that tabs is available to us what we've got on the right hand side is for uh, just a second is the default tab stop so when you press the tab button on your keyboard it will always move at 1.27 centimeters which you can use and move if you want to but what we wanted to do is we want to change this tab here this tab here and this tab here to specific measurements so the first one we're going to do is i'm going to do a left tab stop at three centimeters and what that means it's the distance from the left hand side going that way so we're going to set it and I'm going to do this one here which is a center which will go between so I'm going to change that to six centimeters I'm going to set it and then finally that one there I'm going to do that one quite large I'm going to do that to a right which is going to be nine actually we do 9.5 centimeters and then we click sorry we click set we click OK and if you notice just on your ruler just here we've got a right hand sorry a left tab we have a center tab so that's the center in between and we have finally got a right hand tab which is at the end so the center is in between that just there if I was to undo what we've just done we can get rid of the tabs you can pull them down or you can go back to your paragraph marker uh, sorry paragraph group expand it go to your tabs and then you can clear all of these and start again so let's just go by OK and I'm going to select all of them this time select all the text I'm going to go back in back to your tabs I'm going to do four centimeters so we're just going to stick to left for this um, example four centimeters 
7 centimeters and I'm going to do 10 centimeters as well. Click OK and there we have it everyone and you'll see in the ruler there's your left tab at 4 centimeters, 7 centimeters and you'll see it's at 10 centimeters just there. You'll notice that they're a bit small because the words are a bit larger so it will go towards it. So what we can do if there was something like that you wanted to space out even more to edit it you can go back into your paragraph tabs find the one in question let's clear it and then we're going to type in 12 centimeters and there you are everyone's at 12 centimeters we can just use move that out the way just as the example there we've also got first line indentation which is a really handy tool with um, any paragraph that you want to make sure that the first sentence is indented so this example we're going to select just that we're going to go to paragraph once again and you'll see we've got indentation we're going to click first line this time you may in your test be asked to do a first line indentation but at a specific measurement as well the default is 1.27 we're going to change it to 1.5 so you'll see we want it to be around about this point just there so click OK and there you are you actually have the 1.5 centimeter just done for that one and that's always available on paragraph indentation and first line there as well We've got alignment of um, paragraphs, really straightforward. This is available to you on the ribbon. So if we were to select the text, always the first thing we always do. We've got our left, align left, which is always default. We have our center. We have our right align, which pushes everything to the right margin. And we also have justify as well. You may in your test be asked to justify text in the document. A lot of people do get sometimes a bit confused. It's the option just here. What it does, it pushes your text to the left and right of the margins. So just to be aware, if you see justification in your question, your test, just remember that you're selecting the text, um, the paragraphs or the multiple of text in question, and you're just pressing the paragraph button just there as well. Another key option um, which is really handy for you, especially with big documents, is finding and replacing text in a document. So if we were to go to look to the right hand side of the ribbon, we've got find, click that, and on this part here, let's type in my name, Andy, and you'll see it's found free results. What you can do is you can click specifically where each one is. You may in your test be asked to find a bit of text and insert how many occurrences of that text happens and you'll see it's results one of three so it's it's shown up three times there. You can also replace text so if we close the um, find uh, navigation option and we can go to replace just here get back to our original position and we go to replace I'm going to find what so it always keeps what you previously searched for in there. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to change that to um, Richard. Uh, sorry, I'm going to find me. That's right. And we're going to replace it with Richard. And you're going to click replace all. So you can click replace all. And you'll see we have made free replacements. You wish to continue searching from the beginning, because you can do still. And you click OK. Good thing to keep on um, searching the whole document because it you must ensure that everything's been changed. So if in your test you're asked to change specific text, it's always replaced. And make sure your your spelling is also accurate of what you're changing as well. Really important what you're searching for because if you are searching for something that's spelled incorrectly, it's not going to find it and it's going to say that there's been no changes there as well, which is really important. Get back on to just here. We also have a really good productivity tools which are styles. So in the home tab ribbon we've got the styles option just here. This is really good because it, it, it allows us to apply several set formatting uh, features in one. Um, so you've got a whole host of these here and they're all named for instance caption, heading one, name for example. If I was to select my name just here, just there, you'll see if we were to expand it it's name that's been selected so that's got that formatting of that style already created I'm just going to select over and I'm just going to change it to strong and you'll see it's completely changed it so it's doing several steps of formatting all in one that's defined there as well you can also click the styles launcher as well and it will give you a load of additional 
styles that are being created as well. You've also got the options to create styles, but that is covered in the advanced WordPress, which we're not going to go through. But that is available to you if you were to create your launcher just there. But the big thing to be aware of is that if you don't see your style, if you are asking your test to change the style of specific text, you can't see it. You want to ensure that you want to click the more button just here and it will give you all that's available and you should be able to find the one in question that you're needing just there. A really, really handy feature within Microsoft Word is the Format Painter. Now, for years, I always used to um, create a document, and when I had like headings, for example, or if I had specific text, I had formatting created. I would go down the whole document and make sure that I set a piece of text to all formatting, like the color, the size, italic, the format, uh, the font type, for example as well. What you can do is you can use the Format Painter which is really handy. So you'll see here we've got Conference University which is in bold italic and the font colour is a light blue. I want EC Building to have the same look as Conference University. So instead of me going bold italic change the colour, I'm going to select the text just here. You can select a little bit or you can select it all, it doesn't really matter because they're the same. You're going to click the Format Painter, just one left click and then you'll notice your cursor now has a paintbrush just to the left of it. We're going to hold our left mouse button at the beginning of the text, keep it held down, we're going to drag to the right, and we're going to release. And that's the Format Painter. The Format Painter copies the, the look, the, the formatting, and applies it to where you need it be. So once again, select your text um, that you want to copy, Format Painter, hold your left mouse button down on the text, get to the end, release it, and it does it there for you. So we're going to be moving now to the next tab, which is Insert, which changes to the ribbon of the features available to that section. What's important to remember, though, in this area is that there is a lot of features that you aren't going to be using when you're taking your test. So we're going to be covering the ones that specifically are part of the syllabus that you need to be aware of, which covers me to the first part, which is on the right hand side of the ribbon, which is symbols. So you may be asking your test to insert a symbol. First thing you need to be aware of is we're going to place the cursor where you want the symbol to go to. So we're going to place it there. And then we're going to go to symbol. And then we're able to select whatever our test or what we're required to there. So we want to put a percentage um, symbol, or if we wanted to put a pound symbol, or as I pointed out, the division symbol, or even the pi symbol for that matter, we could do it and it will place it just there for us. If you go to more symbols, it gives you a full suite and options of many, many more that is available. But for yours, it'll be highly likely that you'll only be asked to put in the copyright symbol, which you can do. Like you symbol and the copyright is just there as well. A new feature with the um, syllabus is inserting a hyperlink into a Word Present document. Really handy, which allows you to, if you're viewing it on the computer, not obviously when you're printing, which is not possible, but when you're viewing it on the Word application, you could insert a hyperlink to a web page. So if you want to um, expand on what's been discussed and go to there, you can do it. Really handy. So you'll see just here, for example, We've got an, a, a blue and an underlined bit of text here with the um, web address CIA training. If we hover over it, it'll actually allow us, if we press the control button and we left click, it will actually take us to that website there. If we were to right click it, however, we can edit the hyperlink. We can also remove the hyperlink as well. So click and remove the hyperlink. It keeps the text, but it, it, may, it removes the option as it being a hyperlink. So you can just edit it as normal and treat it the same way. If we undo that, right click, we go to edit hyperlink, you'll see there's two key areas. There's one, there's the address, which is the web URL, so HTTP CIA training, but there's also the text to display. What I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the text to display and just put CIA training. I'm going to put it in capitals, just show you the difference. Click OK. And you'll see it's CIA training, but if I hold control and left click, it still works as a web link, which is really handy. So we right click edit the hyperlink and we could same thing again we can also just put the address but you may in your test be asked to insert a hyperlink but remember to ensure that the text display will not be the same as the address so just keep an eye on what the question is asking for you to put in the address but what it's also asking you to put into the text display as well to insert a brand new hyperlink 
what we can do is if I was to remove that one, for example, fully, and then I'm going to move this other way. So just here, press my tab button a few seconds. And then if we go to hyperlink, just in the middle where links is, we're going to left click, and then we can insert a hyperlink just here. In fact, I'm going to put Google just change this to Google just here instead just as a different example click OK and there hold control and it'll take us to Google just that. and that's the steps to insert a hyperlink edit a hyperlink and also remove a hyperlink as well moving along we're now looking at the header and footer section which also allows us to insert automatic page numbers so we're in the insert tab and you'll see just just a bit to the right you'll see the header and footer section just here just to briefly explain that the header is the top of the page and the footer is always located at the bottom of the page so if we just click edit uh, sorry header for example and you'll see we've got some options here always go to edit header just down here click there and what you'll also notice now is that the cursor is placed and everything's grayed out and there's a line just showing the distance and the area of the header but what you will also notice is that we've also had placed here a new ribbon which is called header and footer tools just here and what that allows us to do it allows us to type our names in or other pieces of text it also gives us the option to also automatically insert a date or a time which we can use the available formats so what we do we could click the top one which is your default format and we will also ensure that we are updating it automatically. So whenever you open the document, it will also have the date of today, so the 23rd of the 7th. And we can also insert some quick parts as well. If we wanted to insert a file name as well, you can go to the file name and then you can click OK and it will give you that as well. So just an extra little neat feature too. If we wanted to come out of the header, we can just click close header and footer and we're back to normal. Now we go to insert, footer, edit footer this time, same steps but instead of the top it's at the bottom this time. You can also, instead of doing those steps that I've just showed, you can also automatically just click when we're in the um, design ribbon for header and footer, go to header, go to footer as well which is really really good. So you've got those options just there. Another really handy um, tool though is the page numbers one here. Now this sometimes catches people out because you may see in your test it'll ask you to insert page number to the bottom right of the footer. But when a lot of people go into page numbers they can't see the header of the footer, they see top of the page and bottom of the page. What it does mean, it means that it is inside the header or the footer. So the top of the page would be the header and you'll see very just slightly, it's a bit difficult to see sometimes but if you zoomed in you've got the left automatic page numbers, center, automatic page numbers, right hand side page numbers there. So I'm going to do the bottom which is the um, the footer and I'm going to do to the right just here. So if my test question asks me to do put, put automatic page numbers to the bottom right of the page, I'm going to click there and you'll see we've got five, four, go downwards, six, exact as well. So that's really really good to be aware of where it exactly is in the um, application so again insert header footer and your page numbers are all there as well moving forward with the inserting pictures and objects is a really really useful tool it really brings um, your documents to life when you've got something that can visually explain the text and content that's been discussed in your document so to insert a shape we've got the illustrations area just here so first of all we've got shapes and we've got several host of shapes we can add if you put your cursor over and don't left click it will tell you what it is you've got oval triangle you can also have a text box additional lines as well so I'm going to create a square box just hit and hold my left mouse button down and you'll see there's a shape created there if I was to left click inside the shape just keep an eye just up to here left click you'll see drawing tools everything that is in this shape is controlled just here format so you can change the color you can change the outline you can also change some effects as well and this also applies to a picture too which is really handy 
So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a um, picture. So if you're asking your test to um, insert a picture or an image um, uh, into your document, highly likely you're going to have to be going to the Z drive. So just keep in mind that it is only asking for something specifically to the location and within your test it will be once again the Z drive where you'll be file, saving, opening, etc. So we go to pictures and for my demonstration it's not going to be the Z drive because it's not available but for desktop and I'm going to insert CU logo and there we are, I've inserted that just there. Left click into it and you'll notice straight away we've got the picture tool so everything that is in here is controlled by the, the format picture tools ribbon just here. What we want to do is we're wanting to wrap the text. Now when you insert a picture or a shape first of all it treats it as if it's a piece of text. What you want to do is to change that. So you go to wrap text and you'll notice that it's set in line with text so if I was to move it, it wants to move it as a piece of text. I don't want it to do that I want it to move quite freely but wrap itself around text so that it's quite fluid and it doesn't interfere with the layout and the structure of the text that's been um, that is already in the document. So left click, wrap text and I'm going to do square and what it will allow us to do now is it will allow us to move it around let's say for example a paragraph and you'll see it is quite square. If you put it to tight You'll see it doesn't make much of a, diff a massive amount of difference, I should say, but you'll see that it is a bit more closer to the text than it is before as well. Same um, thing, you can also insert a picture border as well, so you can also change the weight of the image, and we can make it how we wish to change the actual weight of it as well, for example, just there. So it's another good option. Another really important part to be aware of though is size with a image. So if we want to go left click, we're going to format because it's being selected. We may in our test be asked to change a image size, width and height to a different thing. So let's just say we go to the height to four centimeters. And you'll notice the width also changes as well. So let's just say we wanted the height to be three centimeters, but the width to be five centimeters you'll notice it's not allowing us to change, whenever change one or the other they change, they, they automatically um, ma mirror what they are which is a bit difficult to work out if you've got a question that's asking you for a height let's say at 4.5 centimeters height but it wants the width to be 6 centimeters the reason why it's doing this is because the lock aspect ratio has been set, has been ticked and to get that disabled we make sure that we selected the image in question we're in here, we're going to expand the size section and you'll see lock aspect ratio. Make sure that that's been unticked, click OK and this time I'm going to try 4 centimeter height, 6 centimeter, and that will allow it um, to specifically change the height and the width. Please ensure that when you're in your test do not get frustrated, make sure that you remember that the lock aspect ratio needs to be taken off and then you can apply the measurements that the test question is asking you to do. Really important to be aware of that.